Run it back, nation! What is good? It is I, DJ Swood, run it back, Philly, no frauds, no fanboys, no intros, Algo gang, do your thing. Give me a thousand likes on the video just because. Subscribe to the channel if you watch these and you're not subscribed. That is fraudulent behavior. And this is a no fraud zone. Please hit the subscribe button. Do your boy a favor. It doesn't do anything for you. Subscribers don't matter anymore. It's just for me. It's just for the look. We passed 20,000. Let's keep it going. Turn your notification bell on and watch Sixers games with us on Playback TV. Playback.tv slash running back Philly. Download the app. All right. That was not an intro. Now, let's look at Zach Levine and some trade scenarios that make sense because we just got a new little we just got a new little update about where Zach Levine could end up according to his preferred destinations and the destinations that do or do not prefer him and uh you know let's just look at it um and we're looking at this because you know the Sixers lost a couple games and we're all prisoners of the moment, and uh, you know the Sixers start the season out what eight and one, nine and one, whatever it was. They're they're rolling, they're they're unstoppable. Uh, you know the Clippers hadn't won yet. We clearly won the trade. We're dominating. We're we're going to the NBA Finals. We don't need anything. Uh, we don't need to trade for anyone. Keep the team together. Continue to build chemistry. And then, as Eastwood predicted, because this is what happens every NBA season. You run into a little bit of a losing slump, and everybody goes, oh my God, same team, different coach, same scenario, and Bede can't lead us. Max, he's not the guy yet. He's not this, He's not a star like you said he is, even though he's averaging 26 points per game at 23 years old in his first real season uh, leading the team as a point guard. But we need more. This isn't enough. Everybody's such a prisoner of the moment. I don't want this video to be about that, but I will say the Sixers just played six games in nine days. Yeah, fuck you, NBA. And they looked gassed and tired in a couple of those last games, especially a back-to-back on the road, uh, traveling through different time zones within 24 hours. They had no legs, and they got ran out of the building without Joel Embiid against the number one team in the West. We're going to talk about if the Sixers were going to continue to maybe fluctuate up and down, right? And it became evident that they definitely need some offensive help. That's why we're looking at Zach Levine, okay? That's all I'm saying. It was easy to predict that they would go on a little bit of a losing streak and everybody would freak out again because everybody wants the Sixers to go 82-0 and and Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey to average 40 points per game apiece. Let's look at Zach Levine, okay? Here's the update we got. Today, uh, if I knew how to work OBS, I need a producer. Okay, here you go. The Miami Heat are showing no interest in Zach Levine. The Miami Heat are showing no interest in Zach Levine, according to FLA Sports Buzz. Barry Jackson, 35-year Miami Herald veteran who covers the South Florida's major sports team. I have no reason not to believe Barry Jackson about the future of of Zach Levine. (laughs) A little bit of sarcasm there. But apparently the Miami Heat are out on Zach Levine. Uh, And when we go back to, you know, the original kind of rumors that came out about Zach Levine's preferred destinations, and the Bulls are are terrible. They're going to trade uh, Zach Levine because he's their biggest contract and they are going nowhere. There's no reason for them to not trade Zach Levine at this point. Levine's preferred landing spots were Miami... L.A. Lakers, Philadelphia 76ers. So we like that because we're in there, okay? Um, The Miami Heat are out. Cancel out the Miami Heat. Scratch it off the list, okay? The L.A. Lakers. And shout out to uh, Sixers Aaron777 hits me with, the Lakers have no expiring contracts and one tradable first. It's ours for the taking. I like that. And, uh... That leaves us. So is is Daryl Morey once again bidding uh, on a on a on a on a GM situation where there's no real other competition? I saw another tweet that said like the 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 interest in Zach Levine is not very high around the league, and that's because of his contract. Uh, so we're gonna look at you know some some trade scenarios that 
could land him on the Philadelphia 76ers. The reason is when you look at a game like the past couple games the Sixers played and say Tyrese Maxey's not shooting well and uh, you're playing without Joel Embiid or what have you, you got another guy who's an offensive scoring threat, a legitimate all-star level offensive scoring threat. Is he a perfect player? No. Is he a two-way superstar? No. Is he Kawhi Leonard in his prime? No. But he's an absolute high-level bucket getter. That's what he is. And and, and the people that that harp on the negative and are going to say, we don't want Zach Levine, he's a shot chucker. This is the NBA. And I want to say that I think a lot of people uh, don't want to do certain things or make trades or make moves if it doesn't make you a guarantee. That's not winning us a championship. Or or like if it's not a solidified, guaranteed NBA favorite to win it all, we're not doing it. Guess what? That's not going to happen. There is no NBA favorite to win it all besides the Denver Nuggets right now. And last year, uh, I, I thought, you know, once they get healthy, they, they, they could pull off what they pulled off last year. But there's no perfect trade. I just want to say that, okay? There's no perfect trade. There's no perfect scenario. You got to take chances in the NBA. And guess what? You have Daryl Morey. And guess what? Guess who takes chances in the NBA? Daryl Morey does. So let's just go over two, okay? My boy Shamir hit me with this one in the replies. And this one is interesting. Zach Levine and Alex Caruso uh, to the Sixers, okay? And without looking at what we're giving up, I love it, obviously. One of the Sixers, two of the Sixers' biggest needs are right there. Another high-level offensive scoring threat, Zach Levine. And then you add arguably the best ball defender in the NBA, one of the best overall best defenders in the NBA, and Alex Caruso. And you get your backup uh, facilitating point guard, your floor manager, uh, who's you can at least say he's a better point guard than Patrick Beverly at this point. Um, so you fill two needs. I like that. It's just difficult when you look at what's in the, you know, going out section. Tobias Harris, Furkan Korkmaz, Jaden Springer, uh, the 2020, two second, four second rounders, the 2026 pick swap, and the 2028 unprotected. And I don't want to, I mean, you're, you're getting Levine and, cause this is a tough one for me because you are getting Levine and Caruso. And if you look at both of those trades separately and you say, if you trade for Caruso, this is what it's going to cost. It would, it would cost maybe that 2026 pick swap. If you say you trade for uh, uh, Zach Levine separately, it would cost that 2028 unprotected at least. Right. I just pump the brakes on all of that at once. And the addition of Jaden Springer in the trade, because I, I, I just, I love his defensive potential. And at this point, you know, if you just continue moving forward, developing Jaden Springer, uh, could he give you exactly what Alex Caruso could give you? You know what I'm saying? Maybe not the point guard uh, abilities necessarily, but there's just a couple things in there that makes me wince. Although if they do it, if if they do it, that's, that's all trades go. You got to give to get, you know, you can't, I know all the people hit me all the time with the, with the, uh, just, just give up Marcus Morris and Furkan Korkmaz and, 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 uh, throw in Turquavian Smith and, and a couple seconds. Like that's not how trades work. The bulls are going to want something in return or they're going to sit and, and I don't know, get a better offer from somebody else. Uh, I still think they're going to trade him by the trade deadline. They're going to take the best offer, but it's, it's going to be better than, than some of that stuff. But this is a lot. I like the ascension of Jaden Springer. I like Caruso, but does he give you that much as a point guard? He gives you that much defensively, yes, but does he give you that much as a point guard? Does he give you that much more, you know, than Patrick Beverly, Jaden Springer, or DeAnthony Melton as a point guard? Uh, that's a tough one for me, but I wouldn't be up in arms if it happened because I love the addition of Levine and Caruso to this Sixers roster. Here's the trade that makes sense. Okay. I test Eastwood is in the building. I'm here to solve all of your, all of your quandaries, all of your issues. Okay. Here's the trade that makes sense because you don't want to give up necessarily depth. And if you could pull off this trade without giving up depth, 
without giving up young prospects like Jaden Springer, without giving up players that seem to fit the system perfectly like Nick Batum, Robert Covington, not that those guys are make or break a trade. Uh, I just think this is a perfect scenario for you to get Zach Levine on the squad without giving up too much. Okay, now, there's been a Tobias Harris love fest this season so far, and I understand it. He's playing great compared to what he was doing just last year. There is the argument that this is contract year Tobias. You get towards the end of that contract where you're making $40 million a year and you're like, hey, if I don't perform, I'm going to end up on a veteran minimum. So now you got more effort. You got He's boxing out. He's going to the rim strong and finishing hard. He's all of a sudden, it's like the Tobias Harris everybody always wanted him to be. I still don't necessarily trust it. To me, he's still Houdini Harris, and he's still going to disappear when you need him the most. So let's try not to be prisoners of the moment. Is Zach Levine a better basketball player than Tobias Harris? Yes, he just is. He's a he's an all star level scorer. Tobias Harris is gets there sometimes. He he gets into the conversation sometimes. Let's not be prisoners of the moment. Also, the Bulls are going to want two things. They're going to want draft picks. They're going to want expiring contracts. You give them a massive expiring contract that lets them this offseason clear the entire Zach Levine contract, $40 million off the books, and you give them that unprotected 2028 Clippers first-round pick, and you land Zach Levine in there. It's that simple. It's that simple. I know people are going to say no because they love Tobias right now. People are going to say, no, I'm not giving up an unprotected first for Zach Levine. We're in win now mode. You got to accept that. We're in win now mode. We can't give a shit what happens in 2028. We can't give a shit about a first round pick in 2028. We can't do it. You got to give to get. If this would be enough for the Bulls, see a Tobias and see a 2028 unprotected first. And, uh, you know, if you look at some of the things that Daryl Morey's done in just the past couple of years, he's given up more for less. That's the answer. That's the answer. Give me your thoughts in the comments, man. Trade Machine Eastwood is in the house. If you hate this trade, thanks for watching the video. <laughs> hey, y'all have a good day, man. I'm out.